Hope Christadelphians present This Is Your Bible, a program dedicated to the study of your Bible to learn about the wonderful future that God has planned for this earth. Join us now as we open up the Bible and reason together around God's Word. Welcome back to This Is Your Bible. This is the second part with our uh, guest today, Martin Bamford. We've been uh, discussing uh, the many issues facing uh, mankind today, and now we'll Martin will be talking about the big problem facing uh, mankind, which is war. That's right, Manny. War is a, a horrible thing. Um, just in recent history, we've uh, all heard on the news of the war that's been going on in Afghanistan. Three and a half thousand coalition troops have lost their life in that conflict. Um, we have no way of telling how many uh, opposition fighters have lost their lives and how many civilians have lost their lives in that. But over the years, war has been accountable for many, many deaths. Um, a lot of um, personal heartache for families, a lot of political unrest. Um, it's, it's a really terrible thing. And besides the cost in human life, the financial burden of war is huge. Since 2001, the United States of America has spent $5.6 trillion. That's $5.6 thousand million dollars on armed conflict and defense. So it's a, a horrible situation and there seem to be no winners within the, the field of war. So what are we doing about it? Well, the United Nations is a body which um, their sole aim is to find political and peaceful um, resolution to armed conflicts. Um, just saw on the news the other day that in the UK, students are quitting school and marching, um, protesting um, about, about the wars that are going on. Um, we flex our military muscles. My weapons are bigger than your weapons. So um, don't come and fight us because we can beat you. So we've got a few people that are trying to resolve the situation uh, of war, but we don't seem to be winning because there's 30 or 40 wars going on at any one time throughout the world. Wow, that is indeed a staggering amount of money spent on wars. What does the Bible offer us? What is the hope that we can find? Well, the Bible has a great hope here. Um, one of the Ten Commandments that God gave to Moses was, thou shalt not kill. So straight away, we know what God thinks about one man killing another man. He doesn't approve. But there will come a time in the future where there will be no more war. If we look in the Psalms, there's a lovely verse in the 46th Psalm. And here the psalmist tells us uh, in verse 9, he, it's talking about God, he maketh wars to cease unto the end of the earth. He breaketh the bow and cutteth the spear in sunder. He burneth the chariot with fire. And the next verse goes on to say, Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. So when Christ returns and sets up the kingdom of God, there will be no more war. Um, God will stop them from ending. Now the prophet um, in Isaiah, uh, the prophet Isaiah in chapter 9, he talks about the future birth of Jesus Christ. Um, and in chapter 9, this is talking about Jesus. It says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. So in the kingdom, Jesus will be king. He will reign. The government will be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. So the Bible promotes this idea that the kingdom of God 
will be about peace. And Jesus, the ruler in the kingdom of God, will be the Prince of Peace. Now, we were talking earlier um, about this very subject, um, and there's a verse in Micah. I wonder if you'd like to read that for us, Manny. It's in Micah chapter 4, and uh, we're going to read the first three verses. The first three verses? Actually, if you cut in um, halfway through verse 2. Okay. For out of Zion the law shall go forth, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between many peoples and rebuke strong nations afar off. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. So there's a wonderful thought for those that are affected by war, that a time will come when there will be no war. And all the implements of war that are lying around, they'll be useless. So people will think, well, I'm going to use this tank and I'm going to attach a plow to it, or I'm going to turn this missile into uh, something that I can prune my trees with. Um, there'll be no use for them uh, in a military context. So in this time of peace, um, they will just use them for farming implements. Um, and this is the verse that the United Nations actually has on their logo um, see, yeah. outside their headquarters with a, a statue of a man, a blacksmith, beating a sword and turning it into a plowshare. So um, the Bible promises um, an end to war. What a beautiful vision indeed, Martin. But what about problems that perhaps are not created by man? And I'm talking specifically disease and illness. Well, Manny, that's very true. Um, war, it's, it's mankind's own fault. Um, but diseases and sickness um, are very frequently things that, that come out of the blue and they can um, affect anybody at any time. Um, and, and there are many, many sick people, children especially, when you look at children in, in the children's hospitals that are in, in a very, very poorly state. Indeed, it is no fun watching your sick child lying in bed and there's not much you can do. Now, what is the hope that the Bible offers us in regards to illness and disease? Well, the Bible, um, again, it talks about the power of the Holy Spirit and healing because today there are lots of people that devote their lives to trying to find cures for things. Um, my own sister had cancer. She was in uh, stage four uh, melanoma, uh, which had metastasized. And um, thanks to some people who are very much more intelligent than me, they've uh, working in, in the field of immunotherapy, they produced a, a cure for her cancer. So the feeling that that gives you is unbelievable but it doesn't work for everybody. There are so many diseases that we can't cure. And when we look at um, the, the, the work that goes on, yes, it's amazing what they're doing, but the Bible, that offers a much bigger hope. Um, for example, if we look at um, Mark, the Gospel of Mark and chapter 6, we see how Jesus dealt with this problem of um, sickness. And at the end of Mark chapter 6, um, verse 54, we're going in in the middle of a passage, but when they were come out of the ship, Jesus and his disciples, straightway the people knew him, and they ran throughout that whole region round about and began to carry about in their beds those that were sick, where they heard he was. And wheresoever he entered into a village or a city or to the country, they laid the sick in the streets and besought him that he might touch, if it were, the border of his garment. And as many as touched him were made whole. So Jesus, he had this um, wonderful power of the Holy Spirit, whereby he could cure people from their diseases. Um, in Matthew chapter 9, we see that this is taken, if you like, a step further. At the end of Matthew chapter 9, we have similar stories. Um, 
Uh, verse 35, Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and disease among the people. Um, and then you come into chapter 10, and he says, when he called unto him the 12 disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. And we read in the New Testament of how the disciples were able to uh, heal people with the power of the Holy Spirit. And when we come to that time in the kingdom where Jesus will um, be reigning, then he will be able to cure sickness. And not only that, the problem with curing sickness is eventually we die and people are frightened of death. And in the kingdom of God, we don't even need to worry about death because the believers have the promise of resurrection for us. Now, Martin, that death you mentioned is, could be considered the ultimate problem, and there is no solution to that. How or does the Bible tell us how we can partake of that hope? Okay, Manny, that's a very important point. Um, for those who are interested in partaking in these promises, of having these wonderful things available to themselves, well, there's a straightforward uh, answer to that. God talks about my people. He talks about those people who are mine. Okay, So these blessings are on those who are my people, on God's people. And to get to that state, to consider ourselves one of God's people, come with me just to First of Peter. In First of Peter chapter 1, we read, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. So if we go over chapter 3 of that same letter, in verse 21, we read, The like figure whereunto even baptism doth now also save us, not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience towards God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who is gone into heaven and is on the right hand of God, angels and authorities and power being made subject unto him. So baptism is the answer to this situation. It is a way of getting forgiveness for our sins, and it is a way of um, becoming part of the promises that God offers to us. Thank you, Martin. So it would seem like the problems, the great amount of problems that we face today, and which man cannot, has not been able to solve, the Bible offers us lasting hope and a hope that we can trust. And you mentioned that we can get a hold of this hope by starting to read this book. Absolutely, Matthew. Thank you, Martin. You're welcome. For information on Bible subjects, go to thisisyourbible.com and download from a range of articles and booklets. Sign up for free online Bible courses. Watch videos of Christian professionals showing how their work reinforces their belief in the Bible. A search a list of Bible questions and answers on key Bible themes. This is your Bible.com has answers for you.